I can remember like sitting there daydreaming in my English class when I was like 14 years old and I'd be listening to Pink Floyd and you know people daydream about being a, a you know, rock star and playing the guitar on the stage I was daydreaming about about doing something I didn't quite know what but with big screens with stuff happening on them and lights going off <laughs> Dark Side of the Moon absolutely blew me away the music was just so different it felt like a journey I remember lying in my in, in my bedroom in the dark and listening to On the Run and it was just like wow this is absolutely fantastic <laughs> It's a fast slowing wine with this thing, Jeff. <coughs> I can't remember how many years it's been since I've even <laughs> seen that thing. I haven't really used it. And in my head, I would imagine like sort of abstract geometric shapes sort of doing stuff in time to the music. I'm sure that is the ab that's the genesis of the whole light synth thing, which became. Uh, you know, another another thread of my career, really. I just wanted to be able to externalise the things that I used to imagine in my head where I listened to Pink Floyd. And at first, even when I was programming games, it didn't really occur to me that I could, I would, could use the computer to do that. And he, he had a definite goal in mind. And this was the like a backdrop to live bands, you know, on a big screen. And in some ways, I mean, I, I didn't grasp the whole concept of it because it was it was very personal to him, and you know, it probably still is. There was something purer and more noble in making a performance instrument than there was in making something that was entirely passive, that you just like, sat back and put the music on and fold your arms and watch it. Then to me, the, the, the act of interacting with it was like a, a little act of dancing, if you like, and it was almost like a, 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 a dance you could do that created some other stuff that would go out into the space other people could see. And this is something which we had, uh, the peak of that came in 2002 when we took the, the what was then the, uh, the GameCube light synth VLM 3.5 and took it down to the Warp Records Christmas Raid with wireless controllers. We passed out the controllers to people in the audience and said, look, oh, there's the projection on the wall, there's the controller, you're now in control, take it away, dance with it. He made an awesome set of technology that you could play as an instrument. A lot of time and effort went into that with his friends testing it over the weekend and we flying it, you know, because that, that was, that's what it was, you, you were flying this thing. You know, in his barn, a big projector, some great tunes, like someone probably DJing as well, a bunch of people with controllers making this, this, this interactive light show and like playing together. I was like, I said to Jeff, I said, this is incredible. I, I can't believe what you've made. This is so special. It, 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 it was like an amazing experience. And then good came out of it. You know, it was retooled and reused and ported and brought to different platforms as well. It was a thing that opened the door that allowed me to get the, uh, the, the gig for the Xbox 360 license size. You can say, look, this awesome thing here. And then on your platform, will it be even more awesome? And in doing that, I remember, because the, the, the code name for the Xbox 360 was Xenon. And I remember thinking, we've got Xenon, then we're going to, we might as well be Neon, because we fit into the Xbox 360. Uh, we're a noble gas, so, you know, why not? It's the engine of what he makes today, like in a real literal sense as well. <laughs>